Welcome back to Good Day, where we love local and the Maumee River and the Swan Creek. We're in the right place to bring goods to a growing Toledo in the 18 and early 1900s. But eventually, goods started coming to the Glass City in other ways, and folks moved away from the city center, and warehouses and businesses that were there slowly were left empty. But now there's plenty of entertainment and a ballpark in the 33 <laughs> blocks known as the Toledo Warehouse District. And president of the Toledo Warehouse District, Joe Mark, invites you to wander the warehouse district this Sunday. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. So there's been so much work that's been done to the warehouse district even in the 10 years that I've lived here. Mm -hmm. I've just seen so much change. It's been wonderful, huh? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, the warehouse district was formed. Well, I mean, it's existed mm -hmm. for over 100 years uh, as an association. It formed in 1987 and there were six residents at the time. Uh, I don't know what the official count is now, but a couple years ago when we uh, ran a study. We had over 1,200 residents in wow. the Warehouse District, so it's been pretty phenomenal growth these last couple decades. Wow. Yeah, I love that. And, and similar to Amanda, I've seen so much work mm -hmm. uh, being put into mm -hmm. the Warehouse District, just the entire downtown Toledo mm -hmm. area. Uh, we're seeing so much. So why is it important that uh, these investments have been happening over the years? Uh, it's it's been important because it's uh, allowing us to save buildings that uh, there's so much value in the mm -hmm. structure itself um, the the quality construction was yeah. unbelievable back then mm -hmm. um, and if you don't take care of them they they will eventually they won't survive forever mm -hmm. uh, um, so it's helpful to have that investment going on so we can save these things that become real identifiers real landmarks so the the architecture itself mm -hmm. uh, becomes you know people identify <laughs> <They're piano>. uh, <laughs> you spotted yourself. <laughs> uh, they, they really become a way that people um, denote the community around them by the specific buildings mm -hmm. they're near and being able to save these buildings and reactivate them has been helpful with that. Yeah, and, yeah, and what are, they are. And what are some of those buildings so our, our viewers, they can get uh, familiar with those? Uh, on the tour this year, we're going to have, um, so I guess working our way from south to north, we're going to have uh, the Hotel Royal on there that Aaron Clausen has put a lot of effort into uh, restoring. That was on last year uh, in an early stage of construction. Uh, you're going to be able to see it in its finished state now. Uh, moving up into the uh, around the farmer's market area, we're going to have uh, the Barber Fairs Produce Warehouse Building, which we call the pink building. Mm -hmm. it's, it's giant pink, pink building. building. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, that'll be, there are eight apartments in there and a few commercial spaces. Uh, that'll be on the tour. That was another one that was on last year in right about the middle of construction. It's completed now, so people get to see what it looks like when you finish these out. Uh, the Mark residence, which is uh, my house, mm -hmm. my wife and two, <laughs> two daughters. Um, the Oak and Produce Building, which is across the street from the baseball stadium. Uh, and that's really exciting because they're going to be putting residential in there, which um, th I think a, a, a large push of the warehouse district, but downtown in general, is mixed use developments to, to not just have it be office or mm -hmm. just bars and restaurants or just living, but to have everything sort of working cohesively together. Mm -hmm. uh, you get such a symbiotic relationship that way, and it's really exciting to see specifically on that block because it's when you think about the fact that it's the baseball stadium right across the street, I yeah. mean, to, the, to have this kind of active community right there is, yeah. is really exciting. It has a really cool culture. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And um, people can kind of take this tour how they want to. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. as they make their stops, there will be tour guides there to kind of talk them through some of the development that's yes. going on. Yep, there are eight locations on it. So it's, it's self-guided as you want to do the locations. But once you get there, we have volunteers to give you the history of the building. They can mm -hmm. fill you in on anything you want, but it's all at your own pace. And there is uh, Thrift and Sip is going on at Swan, or, uh, excuse me, uh, Mommy, Bay. Mommy Bay Brewing Company uh, from 10 to three. And that's a cool shopping event. Uh, so you can go over there, do some shopping. Uh, noon to four is our event. Um, and then uh, Ahava, is, which is on St. Clair Street, is also going to be uh, doing sort of a um, kids' event. Uh, cool. You can go in, get your hair done, face paint, oh, uh, boy. have Fun. ice cream. Now you're speaking <laughs> to my kid. Fun. <laughs> and a little bit of a preview that just a block down St. Clair from there, uh, NHA is working on um, an apothecary. It'll be like an old world hmm. uh, malt shop that's also a pharmacy. and. Uh, so it'll be oh, really fun. exciting that they're they're not quite done there, but they're getting close. And you can get in to see a preview of that. Yeah. Oh, very and, cool. And why do you guys want people to do this this particular? And come look at your house. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, really, uh, when they started doing this 20 years ago, it was. It, I mean, if you put yourself in that time frame, the baseball stadium had just opened. Uh, mm -hmm. The Bartley lofts were still in construction. They had a few mm -hmm. done. They had a long way to go. So they're they're really to the to the general public around Toledo. 
didn't really know a whole lot about what was happening downtown. So this was seen as a way to advocate for the neighborhood to help uh, the rest of Toledo see that there's a lot happening here. We've been fortunate that over the last 20 years, we don't really need to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Everybody's pretty well aware mm -hmm. that downtown has a lot going on. <laughs> uh, so now it's more uh, an opportunity for people that they, they might be walking past these buildings all the time. For instance, at the farmer's market every Saturday, there's about 5,000 people mm -hmm. walking past a lot of these right. buildings, but you only see it from the outside. Yeah. So it's a fun opportunity for people to get to come in and see what it's actually like. Mm -hmm. And inside. I think people always want to see the inside of houses. I wonder what that Absolutely. building looks like Absolutely. on the inside, you know. And we know that once these places open up the residents, they open up, they go really fast. Yeah. So oh, yeah. um, it could oh, yeah. be an opportunity for people to get, you know, a preview. Hey, I want to get in this, you mm -hmm. know, as soon as these are done. So it kind of gives you an idea of the timeline. Yep. Of, yep. Of things Absolutely. As well. So uh, is there a registration that's necessary? Uh, oh, you can go store? to uh, wanderthewarehouse.org or toledowarehouse.org or you can find our Facebook page. All of these can uh, route you to it. It's $15. Uh, and again, noon to four on Sunday. Yeah, so just wander. Yep. yep. Wander yep. the warehouse <laughs> and then maybe even pop into some of those businesses yeah. and have some coffee or have some lunch. Yeah, and mm -hmm. people are going to discover new things if they come out mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there's so much that's untapped yeah. that they don't know about already. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, such a cool, cool area. Mm -hmm. So, Joe, thanks so much. Really. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for having for me on. Appreciate yeah. it. Well, we want to thank you for making Toledo's longest running 9 a.m. show a part of this Monday morning. And Monday means home hacks from Amanda. Yep, I'm attacking those pesky fingerprints on stainless steel today. We're going to see if my hack works.